to the Jay Thomas Show, and this is the Spring Summer LRC Outlook, and I'm hoping we're going to get some good news. The founder himself, Gary Lezak, will be joining us, Chief Meteorologist Dean Wysocki, also Justin Storm with us, and, uh, oh, there's Gary right there, and, of course, the one and only, nobody can do it like her, our Ag Director, Bridget Riedel. How you guys doing, man? Well, we're jealous because you're you're somewhere a lot warmer than we are. Dude, guys, let me tell is you that right real? now. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm in I'm in uh, Orlando. It is so hot and humid, and I'm outside. You you would think, hey Jay, how come you're not sitting in your air conditioned room? Guess what? Air conditioning is out. So they're up there trying to they're up there trying to fix it. There are no other rooms in this hotel available. It is or this is my first time in Orlando. You know, Alex and I, we go down, we go down to St. Pete's Beach, we go down to Serrata Resort. You can walk off the resort, go down Golf Boulevard, do some shopping, some eating. This is 100% pure, unbelievable chaos down here in Florida. <laughs> we, we filmed, we went up to Ocala uh, yesterday, filmed the uh, Don Garlis Drag Racing Museum. And that's, I don't know, probably 70 miles up, uh, up north of here in central uh, Florida. I kid you not, we didn't get done filming till like 11 o'clock last night. The traffic, the traffic was like rush hour in the cities. You got five lanes, and it's bumper to bumper. It took us two hours plus oh. to get back. This morning, we went down to Kissimmee and St. Cloud. It is absolute chaos. We're coming back, <laughs> and I asked the guy we were filming, Vinny, I said, Vinny, is it always like this? He says, Jay, they, they have fallen so far behind in communities like ours, like Kissimmee, St. Cloud. He said, I go to get my daughter from school. It's a four-hour round-trip commute, and she's, oh, only, she's only 20 miles away. It's crazy oh. down well, here. Jay, I'm coming down there tomorrow. Because, Are you? Yeah, it's Commodity Classic in Orlando. Commodity Classic is the largest indoor farm show. It'll be oh, held cool. tomorrow through Friday. So the other 10,000 people that are on their way, it's going to get a little worse down there. <laughs> oh. Can you pick me up at the airport? I got a we're actually date by the night. We're actually by the airport. <laughs> we're, we are at the uh, La Quinta uh, right by the airport. So I'll have to keep turning my mic down when the planes go over. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we're not too far from the airport. Uh, otherwise, I mean, it's beautiful down here. But, yeah, the, the heat and humidity, it's one thing. If you're down here vacationing, you can sit around, relax at the beach, have some cocktails, shirt off, shorts on, sandals. But when you're down here working and you're trying to do that uh, in the heat, it is crazy. It's nuts down here. But it's better than being up there right now weatherwise. I like how Jay says, working. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I'm working. I'm looking at beautiful cars. I got to hang out with Don Garlett's nephew all day yesterday. Nice. So. All right, and we've got J Jason's on line one. He's got uh, he's calling in for us. Jason, go ahead. What's going on? Hey, Jay. Yes. You should be uh, in the pool broadcasting with your shirt on. No, I don't pull. I don't pull Scott Hennens. I don't do that. I'll be in the pool after the show's over, though, because I have nothing to film when we. Now remember, we're an hour ahead here, so when we get done, it'll be six o'clock. I might get an hour of sun. Uh, uh, that's it, but I will be in the pool later on. <laughs> and we got the great well, thought that was a virtual in Fargo, and we're not going to get any more <laughs> snow this winter. Is that true, boys? No more snow this winter? Fake Thanks, news. Jason. Appreciate yeah, the phone call, brother. I don't think that's going to be the case, no. <laughs> I didn't think in so. In fact, uh, let's, let's bring in, uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with uh, with uh, the LRC, and uh, we've got Gary Lezak. And Gary, uh Tell a little bit about yourself for anybody that is kind of new to listening to us. I know we have a lot of new uh, ag community listeners. So tell people about yourself and uh, what the LRC is all about. Well, thanks, guys, and great to see everybody. And, yes, Jay, I thought that was a virtual background. <laughs> that is – I want to make this a permanent background. Happy. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Broadcast live from Orlando. I was just in Miami uh, at the Natural Disasters Expo. Met a whole bunch of people down there. We had a booth uh, discussing weather 2020 and the LRC and the cycling weather pattern. And uh, you know, I am I grew up in Southern California. Uh, since I was five years old, I've been interested in weather, and I'm still living my dream. I, I left TV broadcasting. A whole bunch of people from. Uh, 
Kansas City are likely watching your show right now. I, I have them tune in and I tweeted it out. I, I think I did that properly. I'll check, <laughs> and, I'll but, check uh, Gary. Yeah, yeah, so you know what's, you know what's crazy, Don? Pretty... You, know, you know what's crazy, Don, your time of weather? Uh, how long ago was uh, Hurricane Ian? And even up here in Orlando, when you're driving down the interstate, uh, uh, you're going down the express. You can, the amount of homes that still have tarps over the roofs, unbelievable. Wow. wow. West, West 2 meteorologist Eric Burris, uh, he issues a hurricane forecast every year using the LRC as well. So watch West 2 tonight, all right? Okay. <laughs> um, that's in Orlando. but That's what but I yeah, want. I, yep, I watch that, yeah. Oh, good, good. Uh, so, but yeah, I, I grew up in Southern California, always interested in weather, went to the University of Oklahoma. It was like 1987, 1988 when I discovered that the weather pattern is cycling. The weather pattern above us is cycling regularly. And uh, for fast forward about 15 years, I advanced this hypothesis and theory and started sharing it with the KSHB TV blog and became a very popular blog in Kansas City. And the bloggers named it after me, the LRC, the Lee's Act Recurring Cycle, whatever it's called someday, who knows, but right now, a lot of people in North Dakota are learning about the LRC. People in Kansas City know about the LRC, and uh, hopefully we spread the word around the world. But uh, the pattern is cycling. It is the only predictive method known in the world today that can predict not just the weather 100 days, 200 days from now, but predict when and where things will happen. So if there's a winter storm, we will likely predicted it in North Dakota 49, 50, 51 days ago, somewhere like seven seven weeks this year. But uh, we likely predicted that. Justin's like, Gary just gave that away. <laughs> 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 but uh, but it, it's okay. Uh, but we, we it's it predicts hurricanes. It helps us predict uh, severe weather outbreaks. Last week, severe weather outbreak was a slam dunk prediction, you know, months ahead. And then winter storms. And as you know, on your show, Jay, I think we met three years ago and you were in a drought and no. then the drought continued. We predicted it would continue. Then last year we predicted that you, it might be too wet to get into the fields and it was too wet to get in the fields. And I know guy, the guys are talking more about this. And now what's going to happen this year? It's a absolutely fascinating weather pattern. And and Justin and Dean will tell you, and Bridget too, we have cracked the code of predicting the weather. And that's what we're doing. You know, Gary, uh, you know, uh, this has been around for a while. I'm a, I'm a big believer. I know when uh, our chief meteorologist, Dean Wysock, he joined us and started talking LRC. And I'm like, you know, you're full of it. You cannot predict the weather that far <laughs> out. You can't do it. And when we did that first uh, special and uh, you guys laid out uh, the, uh, you know, winter, it, it was I, I was immediately a believer. Now there's there's some, there's some folks or skeptics out there that like to call it fool's gold, and and you know, and I understand it. it. It takes a while for people to to understand and go. You know what? Yeah, there is something here, and there definitely is something here. This is this is crazy what you've what you've discovered. Uh, are you seeing more and more people in your field and an ag as well? Because it's very important important for ag and a lot of industries. Are you seeing more and more now saying, you know? Gary's been doing this a while, and boy, I'll tell you, it's pretty dead on. Are they starting to come around, Gary? Yeah, I think so. And just in the last week, we had made a major announcement, Weather 2020, the company I founded, and Barron Weather. Uh, Barron Weather is a much larger weather company, and they provide weather graphics for many TV stations, and they have radars around the world, and they're experts at predicting the weather now warning you when there's going to be a tornado, watches, warnings, and and uh, Dean and, and Justin are great as well, but Barron Weather, uh, they have that system. So we have partnered with them, and just that one partnership has brought us some credibility. People, I've, I've heard from people all over the United States uh, saying, wow, uh, the LRC is really advancing. And just through an announcement, the LRC has been advancing for a very long time, and I've been working on it. It's my life's work, and I'll continue to. It'll continue to be my passion. But yeah, I, I can't wait to share with your audience, and we'd love to take questions. Yeah. If you guys have any questions out there today, please please bring them on. 
Yeah, 701-293-9000. That is our Thor Building Studio Line, post-frame construction for ag and commercial industries. They are the best in the business. You can also email the show, and that is studio at WDAYradionow.com. That's our Tyler's Tree Service inbox for all your tree needs. There's only one place to go. It's tylerscut.com. Bridget, uh, you being in the ag industry, first hearing about the LRC, I got to believe you, you know, you like like, like most going, okay, uh, let, let's see. Uh, you've been around it long enough. Um, you're seeing that it's the real deal. What are you hearing in the ag world? Because this is huge for agriculture. Okay, so when you said, when I first started to hear about it, the word that comes to mind is foo-foo dust. Okay. Um, I thought you were going to call us a quacks. <laughs> well, <laughs> well that, that works too. Well, you got your degree on WebMD. But it's gotten so much better because of the accuracy. We literally had folks show up last fall at our open house here in November and say, I wrote it down, I tracked it, and your accuracy was spot on. And that has been the proof is in the pudding, right? We are, we are showing people that it works and that the accuracy is there. Do we know that there's going to be a weather disturbance? Yes. Do we know if it's going to rain one to 75 inches? We don't, but we can fine tune that. Just simply knowing what we can adjust for planting dates, for purchasing, for inputs, can all make all the difference for a farmer at this point in the, the year as well. Now, th this question goes to uh, Justin Storm, our meteorologist as well. Justin, uh, you know, I'm not going to ask Dean right now because Dean's been around it, but uh, I'll, I'll get uh, Dean's uh, response when he first heard about it. But for you, Justin, uh, what did you think when you first heard about this LRC? Because you didn't know about till you came to, to work for, for, for us here at Flag Family Media. What were your thoughts, man? You know, when I, when I first was uh, introduced to the concept, uh, no, no, the atmosphere is chaos. You can't do that you can predict seven ten days maybe you get lucky on day 14 well usually at that point you're so far off base that it's not even worth talking about with the computer models that we have so i wasn't a believer at all but you know i was like i'll give it a try and i started writing down the dates looking at it looking at the map sure enough once starts coming back through of well, the same amount of days the cycle is i'm like all right you get that one all right you get this one why does this keep happening yeah, why it, is this still spot on let's a complete ex believer let's expand on that more after our first little break here to pay some bills we'll be right back i know we got callers waiting carol you'll be first on the phones but let's go back and finish uh with justin yeah so you were asking me what i was first thinking about the lrc when i was introduced to this out of school and i was wasn't a believer you're not taught this in the university the atmosphere is chaos and there's no predictability to it past a certain point and even at that point it's still riddled with errors and it's the uh up to the forecaster to figure out what those errors are to, to determine if that forecast is good or not. So when I was introduced to this, you know, you forecast 100 days, 150 days, 200 days, 250 days out in the future. It's like, no, there's no way you can do this. That's impossible. There's no technology out there that, that can do this and do it accurately. Maybe you'll get one or two throughout an entire year. Sure, if you forecast enough, you'll eventually get something right. But when every single thing that's being forecasted, or almost every single thing that's being forecasted using this LRC comes back and it's, you get a hit, you get another hit, you get another hit, you start to understand what, what, what is actually going on here. So that started happening and it immediately piqued my curiosity. I went back, I started following the maps. Back at our old studio, we had, we had a big office. The entire <laughs> wall was covered with atmospheric yep. maps. Into the hallway, too. Into the hallway, out the corner. And <laughs> doesn't help. Man, what the hell are these guys doing putting all these maps up on the wall? And you would space them out so they'd be the same exact well, length of the 30? cycle. And you see all the similarities and the upper level waves that come through. And it's down to the day that, sure, there's that wave. 56 days later, there it is again. Another 56 days later, there it is again. And we started making our three six months outlook forecasts, and you know those can be a little nerve wracking. Oh you, yeah, even for someone who's been in the business for a long time, you throw a three six month forecast out there. I mean, there could be a hit to credibility by doing that. And sure enough, our forecast came back with 80, 90 percent accuracy. Temperatures were spot on. The weeks of heat waves and cold snaps were right down to the week. Your weather guys, until this, nobody believed what you said anyway. I no, know. true. Oh. true. <laughs> give 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 Bridget a rim shot on that one. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. No hey, let me shitty. let me grab let me grab some calls, guys. Yeah. Uh, I believe Carol's gonna be first. Carol, you're up on the Jay Thomas show on the spring weather outlook. Hi, I just have a question. Can you predict if it floods, and are we going to flood this year in Fargo? And I'll hang up and listen for your answer. Good question. A lot of people want that's, to know that. That's a real good answer, Carol, and a uh, 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 or a real good question, answer. I should say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a easy, easy answer to that is 
Um, we always see some kind of minor flooding along the Red River, and I think it's going to be something similar to that this year, minor to maybe moderate. Uh, this, the frost level is not that deep. So once we start to melt this snow, a lot of this is going to be able to, to, to sink in. Uh, it, there won't be as much runoff this year as there has in past years. And that and there's not a whole lot of water content. A lot of this is the dry, fluffy snow. I think it came down to what about an inch and a half right now, Justin. Of uh, if this all melted, it'd be about an inch and a half liquid, roughly. Uh, you know, based on what's on the ground, it's probably something around there. I know that since right. this, the last snow that didn't melt, we've had about three inches of liquid equivalents yeah. over the entire winter. So with that being said, it's uh, we should, I, I just say minor to moderate flooding. And again, we'll see what happens between now and mid-April uh, because we do have a couple of uh, one of those si signature storms coming through here uh, after around and then again after Easter. So assuming that doesn't dump a boatload of snow on us, I think we'll be okay in terms of flooding. All right, let's in, go to Brian. Yeah, go ahead, Gary. Well, well before, you get, before you get the next call, something that we'll have to monitor closely now for, for North, North Dakota is just north of this sweet spot. Right. These are, there are these what we call anchor troughs and ridges. Storm systems reach their peak strength most often near these anchor troughs. And not only is it a broad seasonal effect, but we know when those storms are going to return. And the main precipitation area is not that far from uh, southeast North Dakota. So uh, Nebraska to Minnesota is in the sweet spot of these really intense storm systems. And, and it's absolutely fascinating. So we'll have to watch that for flooding this spring mm -hmm. for the Corn Belt in general. Uh, and there's still some dry areas that we're going to talk about. I'm sure we're going to get to the forecast in the third hour. Is that right, guys? Is that the plan? Is there a plan? Yeah, we just fly yeah. by the There's seat a, of our yeah, pants, so, Gary. Well, my, my plan is hitting that pool later on. That's my plan. Let's get to the, for, let's get the forecast in. Yeah, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to the details of, uh, of the, the whole spring and summer yeah, as we get into the third hour. Yeah. Third All right, let's, let's grab Brian. Brian, thanks for hanging on. You're up on a Jay Thomas show on the spring weather outlook special. Hey, thanks for taking my call, guys. Um, my question is, since we've been in such a drought period pretty much the whole western half of the United States of America, is the LRC able to predict? I know you can't predict that the drought's going to be over in, say, May of 2024, but are you able to predict if we're going into a more wet cycle as compared to how dry it's been? Yeah, there's a very good question. Fascinating, absolutely fascinating. When this weather pattern set up, there's other factors that influence the overall pattern. So the LRC is the centerpiece of the big atmospheric puzzle. What Justin was talking about, how most meteorologists think is just chaos. It's the actual opposite of chaos. It seems like it's chaos, except for it's completely ordered. If something is completely ordered, it is not chaotic, right? So what seems like chaos it is not. This pattern, the one we're in now, set up in October and November, and California started getting hit. The other influences on the LRC are La Nina, which is the cooling of the tropical Pacific Ocean. Enzo is the El Nino Southern Oscillation Index. And Enzo's been in the La Nina phase for three straight winters. And for three straight years, North Dakota has had very different winters from a very dry one a couple years ago to the wet one last year to the somewhat wet one this year. Uh, California got blasted in our model. We have a patent pending LRC model that is global and it predicts the weather across the entire world. And uh, California in November, friends of mine were going to Lake Tahoe. They're going to, they have a place up there. They're going skiing. And they said, what does it look like for this winter? I said, our model is showing 200 to 600% of average snow and rain. Okay, hold, hold 200 that 200 to 600%. Gary, Gary we got we to gotta get to a break. We got to take hard breaks. Tim's in Fergus Falls. He's coming up. Gary, I'll let you finish that when we come back. Seven, finish, and then we'll go to yeah. Tim in Fergus Falls. All right. Thank you for the last call. So our model showed this 200 to 600% of average rainfall for California, for the mountains of California, for the coast, 
and they have been getting blasted. They're getting blasted again. So the pattern of cycling, it's set up in October and November. These seeds were planted. It looks like it was going to be a wet year out there, and it is, and that's in the face of La Nina. La Nina would say it's not going to be wet in California. La Nina was wrong. The LRC is the big piece, the centerpiece of the puzzle. So, yes, California will continue to get hit. There's more storms on the way there. It, it is denting the drought significantly. The drought has been contracting over the western United States. So this has helped. It'll take a, another couple of years of wet winters, which might happen with El Nino developing. Uh, western Kansas, and I'm sure Bridget's going to talk about that later, is a problem with drought and, and a lot more. We're going to talk about all this coming up, and we'll take some more calls. But uh, go to weather2020.substack.com. That's weather 2020 dot substack dot com. I just posted yesterday an extensive uh, detail of what's uh, been happening, what's going to happen, and some of those factors. And we look at the Corn Belt forecast, and I dive into some of your counties. So go to weather twenty twenty dot substack dot com. It does cost three hundred dollars for a year, and you'll get an update every single week as we go through this next year. All right, let's go out to Fergus Falls, and uh, Tim's been waiting a while. Tim, uh, thanks for listening. You're up on the uh, Spring Summer Outlook Special. Hey, it's Kevin. Oh, and Kevin. I just, thank, I just want to thank Gary and uh, Bridget and Jay and Dean. Awesome show. I, I got so interested in this stuff. And I go. And Justin, oh. too. Yeah, I forgot Justin. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Justin. Hey, Kevin, when's your birthday? Justin, it's going to rain. Yeah, Sorry, buddy. <laughs> okay. I forgot the five, right? <laughs> I the five. Um, awesome show. And I've been waiting for this for weeks ever since it was coming on. Um, I get the whole L LRC to some extent. How do you explain the 100-year, the 500-year, and the possible ice age? No, forget that. I did like... <laughs> I, I did like how you said it is not chaos. It is fairly predictable. And uh, God didn't create chaos. Um, I really like your shows, guys, both of them, all of them. And I, Thank I'm just you. listening intently. All right. Take it away, guys. It, Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Thanks, Appreciate Kevin. Appreciate you listening. Uh, this, this, uh, you know, this wouldn't be successful if it wasn't for all the people out there that do uh, uh, listen to all our shows and especially these specials. And we got to say a big thank you to uh, uh, Mr. Lezak because Gary, I mean, this this is a busy man, and he's willing to take the time because uh, I got to believe you don't do this for a lot of radio stations. He's willing to take the time out of his busy schedule to talk to you folks, to explain this, and to give you that outlook. So, Gary, uh, a, a big thank you from all of us at Flag Family and all the listeners out there. Well, you're welcome, and thank you to you. I mean, from Bridget and Dean and that other guy, Justin, is sitting there, too. <laughs> I got him lunch today. And He'll be all right. <laughs> and, and yeah, Jay, but you didn't get him sunnies. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> It's, it's the Jay Thomas show. I mean, this is amazing. It's, we're all proud to be part of your show, and thank you very much for being just the great personality you are. You're just amazing. I mean, you're super talented. Super talented Jay Thomas, you know, and he's thank in you. Orlando. I can't believe it. All right. Everyone was just joining us. That I thought there was a virtual background behind him. And then here, Dean, Justin, and Bridget, they got the – look at that. It's real. It's not virtual. That is real background. Palm trees. Wow. Yeah, man. Oh, hey, there's there's oh, a couple geckos green. right down there. There you go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and then and then the, then the rest of you guys, you have the snow background. And here in Kansas City, we like live in weather, weather hell. I don't know what you want to call it. <laughs> Nothing happens here. Okay? We've had, we, do you know how much snow we've had this winter? Uh, two, eight, seven, I think, is our total. Uh, wow. You, you can have some of That's ours. It. Well, well, didn't Thanks. New York City just get their first measurable snow this season, yeah. like last week? What's going on there? That was it. And, and Washington D.C. hasn't had any snow this winter. That Jay, you should know by now what's going on there. The look, L R C. L R C. Right? Hey, buddy, predicted this. Nice. The L R C. This is when I retired from TV on December the first. I retired from TV, and uh, this guy, Jason, uh, at work, 
he made had this made for me. It's my favorite present. Mm-hmm. Hey, by the way, guys, but before they, we get into before you answer Kevin's question, we should probably mention you can actually watch what's going on right now. Um, where where can folks go to watch the uh, the special that we have right now? You know, I believe it's up on uh, Facebook on 970 AM WDAY on that Facebook page, as well as on 970 WDAY's YouTube channel as well, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. And uh, Gary, Gary, we've got an email. Uh, They said the LRC goes in cycles each year. What determines the cycle length and when does the cycle start? Would you like to explain that? Yeah, we're not sure exactly what creates it or causes it. We do think there might be astronomical reasons um, and forcings because there's this seemingly, it's either a coincidence, but there are no coincidences, right, everybody? There's, it's either a coincidence or there's something to it. But the sun sets at the North Pole every year around um, September 22nd, 23rd. On the autumnal equinox, the sun sets. Here, In the United States, we have twilight for about an hour, but at the North Pole, they have twilight for 12 days. It finally goes dark around October 5th, 6th, or 7th, and that's about the time the LRC sets up every year. When it sets up, it's a brand new pattern. Every single year is unique. You can't say, well, this year looks like 1984. (laughs) Well, it might, but it's definitely going to be unique this year. And a cycle evolves, and if there's a very significant storm in October, that part of the pattern that produced that very significant storm will be cycling back through. And when it does, we start to identify the cycle length. And because it is real, okay, and we have a model, uh, mathematics will be able to analyze and, and predict what cycle it is that year. But we use art and science combined and uh, we think it's astronomical forcing that starts the cycle. So right so, now, this is amazing. Right now, guys, this week, yeah, the beginning to... of the fourth, fourth cycle. cycle. Of this year's pattern. <laughs> uh, I feel like I should have worn a special. You know, I want to just yeah. I want to throw onto that, Gary. But when we go to identify these these maps and just some some more additional proof, and Michael, maybe you can throw up that uh, the image of the three atmospheric maps, uh, 52, 53 days apart. It's uh, somewhere in there. Uh, that is one of the classic storms that we've had come through all three cycles. And every single time it does, it originates from the same place off the West Coast. Yep, that's the one. Uh, it comes in, and 53 days later, there it is again. I, I can't see the date. I believe that was in December, or maybe it was early January. And then the bottom right January image, first. the bottom right image down there is one of the model expectations. I think it was two days before that storm happened, and that was just one of the recent storms that we had come through here. I think the bulk of it went just to our south again. But I mean, the proof is right there. That's one example from this year so far, and you can't tell me that there's not something to this you can't say it's coincidence look at it's that. happened twice Justin, in a row and it's going to happen again and again two or three more times this spring and summer all the way through september until a new pattern sets up and what's fascinating is that right now there is this big huge block okay there's a big boulder in the river of air up there up in northeastern canada right now as we speak today it's a big upper high, and anybody who knows meteorology, that 500 millibar map that you were showing there, that's about 18,000 feet up in the atmosphere. And that these are the maps, there you go. There's uh, January 1st, um, November the 9th, and, and then this one, this recent cycle uh, on the 20th of February. So you can see the cycle. But this big boulder that's up there in Northeast Canada, it's blocking the flow, and I believe it's speeding it up. So right now, that cycle is actually a little bit shorter. I'll talk about it with you later, Justin, but it's about almost exactly seven weeks. But when that boulder breaks free and it gets pushed away by this river of air, which is going to happen the next week, it'll likely drift back towards that 50, 51, 52 days. But it's absolutely fascinating. Okay, we'll get to Stephen in a second. Hang on, Stephen. Uh, what were we uh, What were we talking about before we went to break, guys? Can't remember. The heat's getting to uh, Ga- yeah. Gary, Gary was going over uh, cycle length and, yes. and and how we determine it. And uh, right, yep. 
Yeah, I was I was just now posting to the Substack. And by the way, if you're just joining again, uh, join our. If you're a farmer out there and you want to get your forecast, accurate forecast for the, for the planting and uh, growing and harvest season, go to weather2020.substack.com. That's weather2020.substack.com. And you can become a member. It is three hundred dollars a year, and it's totally worth it, as you guys know. Dean, tell tell us. Uh, we didn't get to hear you. How did you find out about the LRC? Did, well, I mean, I tell me how. Yeah, I've out. been in the business. Oh boy, twenty five plus years. I don't want to give my age away, but it's been a long time. <laughs> and uh, fifty nine. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, right. <laughs> so when Whoa! Right, when I was working. Um, when I was working in Nebraska, and I was working there for quite quite a few years, um, I ran across a couple of meteorologists in Nebraska. They're no longer there. And they said, hey, have you ever heard of Gary Lezak's LRC theory? And I'm like, no, what's it all about? And uh, they kind of broad brushed it and told me, you know, this is kind of how it works. We're not sure exactly how it works, but we heard it's, you know, very accurate down in, in Kansas City. So I did a little, a little research. I read a couple of uh, Gary's papers that he's published, and I'm like – Interesting because when I was uh, interning way back in the day with Tom Skilling in Chicago, uh, he's been around forever, um, Tom kind of stumbled upon something like this. He didn't know exactly what it was, but he said, you know, every October, for some reason, it seems like uh, a, a new pattern sets up. And, 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 but, but he just kind of left it at that. You know, he just kind of left it on the side table and really didn't uh, think much about it. So I'm like, well, man, there's got to be something to this. So... I did a little more research and kind of followed Gary online. I followed his blogs uh, when he was working at uh, in Kansas City on TV and and followed along. And I'm like, wow, you know, this really, really, th there's something to this. So uh, I just I kept kind of just researching it, and then uh, uh, you know uh, became acquaintances with Gary a number of years ago. And uh, you know, if if I ever had a question, it's like, hey, Gary, all right, you know what's with this pattern here, here, and here, and Gary would explain it. Gary's a great teacher on how the LRC actually works, and so Gary spreads his knowledge to all, you know, to uh, other meteorologists, and then we spread it to other meteorologists, and it's kind of a domino effect. So, when, you know, I was kind of in the same boat, like, this can't, I mean, this has got to be a coincidence. It's not. I mean, it is, you know, it's, like Gary said, it's it's 80% accurate six months out. I mean, that's just that just sounds incredible. Better than a it seven is. day forecast. It is, and yeah. uh, and Gary will tell you that Hurricane Ian, which uh, which hit uh, the the Fort Myers area last uh, last fall. That was a nine month. That forecast. was that was predicted back in March. I mean that's that crazy. you know it's just absolutely incredible. And 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 you know I, I tell Gary and and when Bridget and I and and Justin when we go out and talk to community groups here. I said, mark my word, this will be the next generation of long-term forecasting. Better. I got 100 bucks on this deal. <laughs> <laughs> that's the hey that, that, that's bridget's orlando fun money right there right those are those are and, fun tickets hey i'm not going for the generic drinks right and no, I, of course not and i've had other people ask me why don't more meteorologists use this well it's not that simple because you have to be taught you have to know how to accurately use the lrc once you recognize it learn how to use it it's it's still not that easy but it gives you an upper hand on forecasting, and it's not a competition thing. You know, Gary will be the first to say, let's spread this word across the U.S. Let's get every meteorologist in, to use this. I've been trying. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and Gary, I've been trying. Yep. And, and it, being, will, it will yeah, happen. The, it will happen. <laughs> it, uh, I got interviewed yesterday by the Daily Beast. That's a big, huge publication. And so I, they were very skeptical of this reporter. She's short, sort of... Uh, grilled me a little bit, and uh, she asked some really, really good questions. She asked, "What what is the National Hurricane Center? You know, you predicted Hurricane Ian six months, nine months, ten months before. What do they say? Well, they think it's impossible. Uh, the going going scientific methods right now suggest that anything beyond 15 days is not possible. So, so when meteorologists get blinded and they think impossible, they don't even seek this out. And so it's not only possible, we're doing it over and over again. Jay, last year, I remember, 
Jay was not in Orlando last year. No, he was I wasn't. Back in the, <laughs> he was back in the studio, and Jay Thomas was sitting there going, Gary, what does it look like for April? And we predicted blizzards in April for you when they would happen. Yeah. And you're like, no! I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Guys, and, let me – we're running short on time for this hour, and i got a stack of calls to get to. Uh, I'm going to see if we can slip Steven in here. You other callers, just hold on. Steven, you're up on a Jay Thomas show on the Spring Outlook special. Hello, everybody. How's it going? Hey, good, good, Steven. Hi, Steven. Uh, my quick question was, uh, when it comes to uh, the North Pole part of the LRC, um, is there any relation to the spot in North Pole that actually pulls our atmosphere and injects it into space? I, I, that, I don't know. We'll have to talk to an astronomer on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. All right, Steve. Pre- All right, though. thanks, Steve. Appreciate the phone call. And uh, again, we're we're running short on time for this hour. But if you're on hold, don't lose your spot. We're going to get you. I know we got. Uh, I Grant, believe it's Grant, Grant coming and up. Grant Bruce. Got, yep. Yeah, Bruce coming up. Let me. I think we might have enough time, Ronnie. Uh, sixty seconds. Okay, we'll we'll hang on. I promise. As soon as we come back, we will we will not gab. We'll get right to the calls. Uh, Grant, you're going to be first on the phones, and we're going to get to. Uh, I believe it's Bruce and all the other calls. So just hang on. You're listening to the Spring Outlook Special.